father of history, Herodotus. He called me Sphinx, as if I were from his land. And that name is now mine. Close to the Nile, I watch over the plateau of Gizeh, over all its monuments of modest or fantastic height. They are tombs. Civilizations are like islands on the ocean of barbarism. Over this one, the Sphinx has gazed and watched for 5,000 years. At the foot of such mountains of stone, everything becomes minute and insignificant. Man is an insect. Yet, it was men who built these massive monuments and the names of pharaohs whose tombs they are have crossed the ages. Their glory has defeated time. is vast enough to hold St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome, the cathedrals of Florence and Milan, Westminster Abbey and St. Paul's. Three million blocks of stone, some of them weighing 30 tons, were assembled by Cheops' faithful workmen to achieve this fabulous construction. At the center of it, the pharaoh planned his inner chamber, where his mummy was to lie in splendor for eternity. At the foot of this pyramid, in the rock, a temple was built. And there were kept the barges of Cheops, the barges of night. In these large wooden vessels, the dead pharaoh could continue his voyage in darkness toward eternity. But all that remains of him is a small ivory figure, showing a noble face, the nose aquiline, the jaw determined, and the hieroglyphs representing the name he gave to his pyramid. Cheops dominates the horizon. <laughs> 